Welcome to Upticks. I'm Jake Falcon, the founder of Falcon Wealth Advisors and your host of Upticks. Today is episode 116, Buying Low and Selling High. Okay, thank you all so much for joining me back on the show. Uh, before we dive in, I hope that all of you out there are staying safe and healthy during this horrible pandemic. For today's topic, I wanted to talk about two ways that we at Falcon Wealth Advisors aim to sell when things are high and buy back in when things are low. If you've ever studied anything in Wall Street or even just looked as a passerby, I feel like everybody has heard of that. Sell, sell, sell when things are high, buy, buy, buy when things are low. It is very easy to conceptually understand and know. However, as humans, it is very, very difficult to do it. Why might you ask? And I've actually studied this, is that many people, and maybe I don't know what the exact numbers are, maybe let's say half people, half of the people think when a stock or an investment is going up, 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 that it's going to continue to do that. So as human beings, naturally, we are linear thinking. So we think in straight lines. And we all know that the world and life doesn't happen that way. It zigzags, right? Good things happen, bad things happen, good things happen, bad things happen. And so when you hear me say, sell high, your innate linear thinking brain says, no, what are you doing? That stock or that investment is growing, Jake. Why would you sell that? We are on the pathway to profitability or money or income or, or, or good, whatever, right? Now I, and we've talked about this actually in my research and trading group, uh, both of my research and traders, they lean more linear thinking. It's also called momentum investing that they think of a stock is going to do well, it's going to continue to do well. And sometimes that happens. Me personally, while I'm human like everybody else and I do think linear thinking, when it comes to investing though, I believe in something called mean reversion, meaning what goes up must come down, right? I don't believe that a stock will go up and up and up forever without pulling back at some point. Right? It just doesn't happen, in my opinion. It doesn't, stocks don't keep going up at these above average returns year in and year out forever. And so what we do, this is number one of two, one of the ways that we sell and we buy, sell high and buy low is that when a stock or a sector or a style in your portfolio, so there's all these different subcategories. So, so on a high level, it starts with stocks to bonds. Then you have large caps, small caps, international commodities, and then you also have consumer discretionary energy, telecom, right? So you've got all these different categories where we are monitoring them on an individual stock and bond level for our clients. When any one of those grows to be more than 5% of its target weighting, so let's say there's a target weighting for large cap value. This is just a, a generic example of 10%. Well, if it becomes 15%, we bring that allocation back down to the client's target, which is 10. So we take that 5% and by definition, it needs to total 100. So that means if something's overweight five, something else and maybe several things are underweight. So we take the five that's over and maybe we put two in small value and three in international or whatever is underweight, which again is forcing us all based on mathematics to sell when things are high and buy back in when other things are low. Now we're doing that not because we're claiming to predict the future. We can't predict the future and nobody can. So if you're following something on Twitter or Facebook or the internet, or there's some guru out there saying they know what's gonna happen in the next three, six, 12 months, 10 years, whatever, don't believe them, nobody knows. And if somebody does know, they're not gonna be selling you stuff on the internet, right? We're doing it though, because we feel and markets have proven that things cycle in and out of favor. And so if something's doing very well in 2020 or 2019 or whatever, 
sure it may do well the next year, but typically it doesn't do, it isn't the best performing group every single year. In fact, I haven't seen that happen where, where there's one style that just dominates for decades. It doesn't, I haven't seen it. Right. So that's one way that we sell high and we buy low for our clients. All right. So that's more on a mathematical a basis, you know, rebalancing pretty standard. A lot of 401ks now will let you maybe set that up automatic. I don't believe in using intervals. So some people will do it every six months. We want to do it based on volatility and, and, and price movement to us. That makes more sense than just setting a trigger of a time. And that's why people hire us to manage that for them. And then the other way we do it, it gets a little technical, but it's something called a relative strength indicator. And this is a technical term. And what this does is it's printed. It's not like I have a secret way to look at it. It's out there. You can pull it up. And every stock, and this is just talking about the stocks, every stock will have one of these out there. And we look at the rolling 14 day it's called RSI, Relative Strength Indicator. And what it tells you, and again, it's not perfect, but it'll tell you if, if, if the RSI number is high, typically 70 or higher, there is a suggestion in the short term that the stock price may be somewhat overbought, meaning it's run up and it's gotten a little maybe ahead of where earnings and other things are supporting that price. And then just conversely, if it gets down, the RSI gets to 30 or below, it may be suggesting that it potentially could be oversold. So we will use that indicator as a guide on trading options, which again is a whole nother advanced topic. And if you have questions on that, I'm happy to set up a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't like to talk about options on too deep of a level because these, uh, that my show optics is out there for the public and I don't wanna confuse somebody. And I don't, certainly don't want you to go out there and try to trade on this information alone. This is for professionals that are doing it full time, by the way. So it's a quick disclosure. Don't be doing this on your own because it's very dangerous if you do it wrong or you get greedy or fearful or whatnot. But my point is we're using some technical indicators to tell us if a stock may be overbought and oversold and maybe we will trim or add to a position at that point or use some options trading, right? So it's again, technical analysis aligned with overall macro rebalancing is how we at Falcon Wealth Advisors look to sell when things are high and buy when things are low. We do not, and no one, mind you, no one knows how to predict the future. So we're doing this though to stay prudent. Our strategy is designed to hit singles and doubles. We are not, you know, these hot stock pickers claiming we're gonna make you 500% in a year or you could lose all your money. We're not doing that, right? Our clients have saved up a lot of their capital. Maybe some of them are still working. Maybe some of them are retired. But in the end, clients want to make money, right? And ultimately, most importantly, they want to hit their financial goals. And that's why you should be investing in the first place. If you're investing just purely to speculate, I would highly suggest you probably look at other forms than the stock market. You can go gamble, right? Bet on horses or go to a casino or I don't even know if casinos are open. But there's other things to do that are probably far more entertaining than using the stock market as a place to gamble, right? What we do is we invest for our clients and we invest their money based on their financial goals. And then when we have these investments, we want to sell when some things are high and we want to go buy in when other things are low so that we get a nice, smooth growth in their portfolio and hopefully hit their target return and average that over many years because then that tells us that their financial plan is going to work according to the projections. Okay, good. So I gave you a little bit of a, a peel behind the curtain there on, on things that we're doing at Falcon Wealth Advisors. I have two research and traders on my team, uh, Abby Stockman and Matthew Navikis, and that's their full-time job, right? So we use technology to tell us when clients' accounts are out of sync, and then we go in there and we review them, and we do exactly what we say we're gonna do. We're gonna sell high and we're gonna buy other things low, right? And that's what we're doing for our clients. And we love doing that on a stock and bond basis versus using mutual funds or exchange traded funds or annuities. We don't wanna do any of that. So third party products with hidden fees, typically lacking transparency and no control. We don't wanna do that. We wanna own the stocks, we wanna own the bonds, we wanna pick and choose what we buy and sell for our clients. And the whole idea is we wanna match this up with their financial plan 
so that we can help them reach their financial goals. Okay, good. So that's all the time that I do have for you today. I want to thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, recognize that, um, you know, this horrible pandemic, we, you know, it is going to pass. I don't know how, I don't know when, uh, but at some point the curve is going to level off, uh, hopefully around springtime so we can get out there and enjoy some Kansas City weather. Uh, but like I said, I hope all of you out there are staying safe and healthy, and we look forward to uh, seeing you on next week's episode of Upticks. Uh, I do want a quick shout out. I'm out there on all the social media platforms, not all of them, I'm not on TikTok, but I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So feel free to send me a connection if we're not already connected. Uh, I love connecting with more people. And then my company or, or our practice, Falcon Wealth Advisors, we're out there as well. So we're out there on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Thank you again for tuning in, and we hope that all of you have a great week. Mm -hmm.